Well, life goes on. It's two years now since I had, uh, since I was injured. Everybody likes to say since I had my accident, but just to reiterate, you know, I don't really think that there are accidents in God's economy. I don't think he looked away. I don't think he was caught by surprise. Um, I was. <laughs> the most common question that people ask me all the time is, what do the doctors say? Well, I don't spend a lot of time with doctors anymore because their absolutely most common comment is, we just don't know. After six months, everybody said, and it's been my experience, that after six months, you really have to work to get improvements. After one year, I was told, and this has somewhat been my experience, that it is very, very slow going. I mean, you really, really have to decide what you want to do and uh, painfully go after it. After two years, Everybody said it takes a miracle. So if what they've been telling me is right, and they've been fairly right so far, um, I think this is where I stay. And then of course, every time I stand up, every time I stretch my shoulders, every time I get my trapeze to pull my arm, my left arm up, um, I am supremely aware that uh, without God's mercy, I would be dead, which there have been lots and lots of months, I got to tell you, where day after day, I would, I would never, never have felt a need to ask God why he allowed me to be injured like this, but I have asked God, God, couldn't it have been just a little bit harder because it's so painful to live? And Jenny would always say, but Steve, I need you. And I just couldn't understand that. Now I'm beginning to understand that Jenny may need me more now than she did before because most of us need to be needed much more than we need other things. Um, that search for significance. And now, Who'd ever think, now I'm much more capable. Flying has always been something that I very much enjoy doing. I don't, not to just bore holes in the sky, but, um, but, you know, for when it was needed, I just love to do that. And then, when I got to fly, do all the flying and end of the spear, be the stunt pilot there, I mean, that was just incredible. And now a lot of people identify with me with flying, so a lot of people have asked, you know, are you going to be able to fly again, and thinking no. You know, when I actually realized that I was up in the air, by myself again. Um, it it was um, it was an amazing feeling. It was really quite a bit like the first time I soloed. When you realize, ain't nobody up here but God and me, and uh, that's something that I really thought I'd never be able to do again. I don't do it often, but uh, I offer to take a lot of people flying when they see how crippled I am and think that driving is a scary thing for me. Then I tell them I fly and they said, boy, I'd like to see that. And I said, come on, let's go over there. I'll show you. Got an empty seat. The idea of wounds and scars really came to me, I think, first when I was a young, probably teenager, and I ran across or I noticed these verses in, um, in Hebrews 11. 
It says, by faith, these people overthrew kingdoms, ruled with justice, received what God had promised them, shut the mouth of lions, quenched the flames of fires, escaped death by the edge of the sword. Their weakness was turned to strength. They became strong. Um, it says, women received their loved ones back again from death. And then with almost no change, it said, but others, but others by faith, were tortured, refusing to turn from God in order to be set free. They placed their hope in a better life after the resurrection. Some were jeered and their backs were cut open with whips. Others were chained to prison. Some died by stoning. Some were sawn in half. That got my attention. And others were killed with a sword. I just, I remember thinking about that and thinking I would really prefer to be in the first group, but if I was ever hurt, I want somebody from the second group to come. I don't want somebody coming saying, oh yeah, well I had that same thing. I was an incomplete quadriplegic and I prayed and God just, I'm just perfectly normal from that point on. Um, but when people that don't know about Christ and don't know about his love, when they have a wound and somebody, you know, some Christ follower with makeup over all their wounds comes to, to try to help them, I mean, they, they don't see any of their scars. and. I mean, people want to see Christ followers who have scars where they have wounds so that they know, hey, this person, this person has been where I am and uh, then they trust us. So it's time to take the makeup off, time to quit buttoning our collars up to our throats and wearing masks. Uh, people want to see that, that we have hurt and there's no stronger witness that anybody has than to say, um, you know, I was weak, now I'm strong. You say, I did feel rejected and worthless, and now I, now I realize that I am worth something. Or uh, the blind man in the Bible, after he was questioned and questioned and questioned, finally said, hey, 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 I can't answer all your big questions, but I do know this. I was blind, and now I see. And it was that guy over there that did it for me. You figure it out. That's a powerful testimony. And, and all of us who are Christ followers, it, it, if it hasn't made any difference, then we aren't really Christ followers. The experience is different, but um, for me to be able to say, you know, I still, I still know that God loves me. I still know, and I, th there's gotta be some reason for this because God doesn't waste hurts. I'm thankful for that. I want people to come, be willing to come and, and who have hurt and tell me, Steve, there's life after this.